Hello and welcome back to the course on blockchain. And today we're talking about cryptography. We're going to understand what role the SHA-256 hash algorithm plays in blockchain. All right, so there's our map and we're starting with hash cryptography. So let's look at a person. There's a person, could be me or you, and we have a fingerprint. And different people have different fingerprints. So if you look at many different people, they're all going to have different fingerprints to us. Um, it is, there is a possibility that there'll be somebody with the same fingerprint, but it is very unlikely. Uh, the probability of that is about one in 60 million. So in a way you can say that uh, a fingerprint is an identifier of a person. And that's a very powerful concept, uh, which is used by forensics departments in the police, uh, where they can identify criminals just by their fingerprints and take that as evidence to court. Now, what if we could take the same principle and apply it to digital documents? What if we could come up with a sort of fingerprint that would identify these documents for us? And such a fingerprint exists. It's called the SHA-256 hash. It looks like this. So the algorithm behind SHA-256 was developed by the NSA. And I know what you're going to say. Um, you've probably heard the NSA in the news in the past couple of years, and you might have you know, some, um, you know, like a great opinion about them or the opposite, you might not like them, or you might be indifferent to them. Uh, regardless of what uh, is said in the news about the NSA and all those things, uh, one thing they did do really well is this SHA-256 algorithm. It works well, it's um, very secure, and a lot of uh, places in the world, a lot of applications use it to store passwords, to check digital uh, documents, to um, and in fact in blockchain it is used, that's it, like one of the core things, core principles, uh, building blocks of blockchain as we will see uh, further down in this section. Um, and the code for, or the algorithm for SHA-256 is not secret, it's open, uh, completely open, anybody can learn it, understand it, how it works. Uh, at, at the end of this tutorial, I'll actually recommend a paper which you can read and understand more about how SHA-256 works. Now, this uh, hash is called SHA-256 because uh, SHA stands for Secure Hash Algorithm and 256 is the number of bits it takes up in memory. Uh, the hash is always 64 characters long and it consists, as you can see, not just from uh, digits but actually from uh, letters as well. That's because it's a hexadecimal hash. It has um, numbers from 0 to 9 and the letters A, B, C, D, E, F. So there's a total of 16 of them there. So that means each character in the resulting hash takes up uh, 4 bits uh, because 4 to the power of 2 is 16 and 4 times 64 is 256. That's how these numbers are all linked up together. 64 times 4 which is as the size of any the size of basically any one of these is 256. Um, and the important thing to note here is that this algorithm works not just for um, Word documents or text documents. It works for any digital um, document or any digital, just anything digital. So you could put a video into the algorithm. You could put um, like text. You could put an audio. You could put an executable file. You could put a whole operating system in there. Whatever you put in there, it will spit out a... Um, a fingerprint, which is a SHA-256 hash. So let's have a look in action. You know, it's great to describe these things and talk about them, but let's have a look in action, see how it works. So we've set up a tools uh, kit for you. It's at uh, tools.superdayscience.com slash blockchain slash hash. And if you head on over there, let me just go like this, you will see uh, that there's a whole toolkit over here set up. So you can go to log, blockchain, distributed, and so on. And we'll talk about these further down in this um, course. But this is what we're going to look at today. But before we continue, there's a copyright notice. We just wanted to make sure that uh, this is not our original code. This was actually created by someone else, uh, created by um, Anders94. And so Anders brought Brownworth, thank you very much to Anders for making this available. You can uh, check it all out here and you can actually add it to your own website if you like. And so here, what you can do is you can 
input some data and you will see that it'll come up with a hash. So let's let's give it a go. So let's say I'll put in um, hello, this is the blockchain A to Z course. As you can see, this data has this hash, right? And so we're gonna explore a couple of things and after that we'll go back to the presentation and we'll talk about the characteristics of a hash. So right now, you, first thing I wanted to show you is that if I remove this now, and then put it back, it'll have exactly the same hash. See, 9944 and then DD11 at the end, so let's remove it again, and then put it back, 9944 DD1. Uh, DD1. So it always will, um, it always will rep reproduce the same hash if you put in the same data, and that's logical, right? So because like with humans, you take the same person, you check their fingerprint, and then you take the same person, check the fingerprint, it's gonna be the same every time, otherwise, it wouldn't really make sense. You wouldn't be able to use it, to use it for forensics. Um, another thing is that if uh, we change one tiny symbol, like we add like a another exclamation mark here, the hash changes completely and entirely. And that's called the avalanche effect. We'll talk more about it just now. But the m main point here is that it, which making a slight change, the hash doesn't change just slightly, changes completely. You can try like remove the question, exclamation mark and put a dot, completely different hash. Um, and as discussed, you can put anything here, you'll always get 256. So for example, I've got, over here I've got pasted, um, copied the first chapter of War and Peace. It's like the biggest book in the world and this is the first chapter of it. As you can see, I've pasted so much text in here and the hash again is just 256 uh, bits, so 64 characters. So there we go, that's uh, SHA-256 in uh, demonstration. Have a look here if you'd like to play around with it. We're gonna go back to the presentation now. Okay, so the five requirements for hash algorithms. Uh, SHA-256 is not the only one. There's other uh, algorithms, SHA-512, SHA-3, and you could come up with a uh, hashing algorithm. However, there are certain requirements for it to be useful. Number one is it has to be one way. So basically what that means is that you cannot go backwards. You cannot go from the hash to the document. So you cannot uh, restore or reverse engineer uh, the document based on the hash. It has to be like a fingerprint. Like for a human, you if you have the fingerprint, you cannot... Um, restore what the person looks like, you cannot understand you know, what color eyes they had or anything else about them, but at the same time, uh, you, what you have, if you have a person, you can always get the fingerprint, so it's only one way. Um, number two is it has to be deterministic, meaning that if I take the same document, exactly the same document later on, and I run the, sa the apply the hash algorithm again, I'll get exactly the same result, as we saw. Uh, with that illustration. So these two are pretty straightforward so far. Uh, the third requirement is it has to be, uh, has to have fast computation and we'll see throughout the course why that's important. Um, and the fourth requirement is the avalanche effect. And I specifically put an image here because to like ingrain this in our memory so we remember uh, that we saw this avalanche on the screen. It is an ultra important requirement of the hash algorithm. So let's see what it implies. The avalanche effect means that if I take exactly the same document and I change, like make a tiny little change, even one bit of data I change in the document. For instance, we've got a plus one over there. Um, over here, so if we do that tiny little change, any change, then the hash will be absolutely different. So we already saw that in the demonstration where when we were adding an extra exclamation mark or uh, making some other small changes. Uh, the reason it's called the avalanche effect is because of how that is implemented inside the algorithm. Um, we're not going to go into detail now, but like you'll be able to check that in the paper if you like. Uh, but it basically, that one change triggers a few changes and they, and they in turn trigger more changes and they trigger more changes. So it's very smart how it's uh, caused and it's very uh, similar to an avalanche where like one tiny like wrong step uh, can cause uh, snow to start moving and then more snow moves and snow more snow moves and you get an avalanche. Um, so that's uh, what the avalanche effect is and it's very, very important in 
um, the application of blockchain and we'll see why when we're talking about mining in the mining tutorials in this section in this module you'll see why the avalanche effect is so important and part five it must withstand collisions so what does that mean what does withstanding collisions mean well it means like as we saw with with people that sometimes one in 60 million uh, they, you can have two people who have the same fingerprint and same thing for the hashing algorithm because uh, the I got the pigeons on the screen already uh, we'll, in a second so I'll explain what the pigeons are doing there so with the hash algorithm uh, as as you can see it's 64 bits right so it's very limited it, even though like there's a lot of different variations that you can have it's still limited it's not infinite and yet the um, d uh, quantity of different digital documents that we can create is unlimited is enormous we can uh, like there's tons and tons of books there's tons of um, different uh, photos being created every single day videos all this stuff so in essence the amount of digital data we have is much much greater or we can possibly have is much greater than the different the number of variations of a 64 character um, representation and so that means that the in mathematics is a principle called the pigeonhole principle that means if you have for instance in this case 10 pigeons and only nine holes you're gonna have to put two pigeons into one of those holes there's no way around it right so if you have more of uh, quantity a then there is slots in quantity b then it, inevitably there will be uh, what we call collisions in uh, quant in uh, that representation when you try to move from quantity A, which is much greater, to quantity B. So it, naturally, there will be collisions, and you can't do anything about it. It's just pigeonhole principle, and that's okay. The thing with that is that it is so unlikely, it is so rare that that will happen that we can deal with it. It's okay. It's not going to uh, ruin the algorithm. The problem, just like with humans and fingerprints, we can tolerate that. That's a very rare instance, and it's pretty much a very, very unlikely to happen. Um, and if it like it's uh, it's not going to affect anything if it does happen somewhere sometime. But with uh, must withstand collisions, what that does mean is that we need the algorithm needs to be able to withstand artificial collisions that, for instance, pirates can create, and that's a problem. So if you can find a way to create these collisions to make two different documents purposefully have the same hash. That's a problem because then you can forge documents. Then uh, you might have an important document that, for instance, is who's, uh, who this house belongs to, like ownership document. And it might have a name in there. And if you know, if there's a way to forge collisions, to create artificial collisions, then you'll be able to change the name on the document and the hash will be the same. So the person checking the document by the hash will think that you are the owner of the house. And so that's what we mean by withstand collisions. So collisions should not be possible. So there we go. Those are the five requirements for secure and safe hash algorithms. Uh, they have to be one way, deterministic, a fast computation, the avalanche effect, and must withstand collisions. I know this is quite a lot to take in on cryptography uh, to at the very start, but at the same time, this is the foundation of what we're going to be discussing about blockchain. So these uh, things are going to be very very useful to us and to finish off uh, here's the promised additional reading if you'd like to learn exactly about uh, how the hash sh uh, how the SHA-256 algorithm works then you can check it out here the paper is called on the secure hash algorithm family it's actually not a paper it's actually a chapter in a book it's a uh, chapter one of cryptography in context um, and that chapter one was written by Perna Pennard and Verkhoven and the links over there, the link will also be in um, the notes for the course. There we go. Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And now you're well versed in uh, SHA-256 and we'll start learning more about blockchains and applying this knowledge from the next tutorial. And I look forward to seeing you there. Until then, enjoy blockchains.